very much for inviting me. So in 10 minutes, I will um, uh, try to talk about two uh, projects we are currently running. It is uh, about mining the biodiversity and mining the history of medicine. Uh, I'm Sofia Niadu. Uh, I'm the director of the National Center for Text Mining, and I'm also part of the School of Computer Science at the University of Manchester. So this is the overview. So I'll start with the systems. Uh, mine history of medicine, mine bio biodiversity, a Europe PMC if I have time. I'll talk very briefly about the infrastructure which supports all that, and if I have time, the tools. So the mining history of medicine, the aim is actually to provide, it's ongoing, is to provide a semantic search system uh, based on two uh, medical archives, which are quite historical, med uh, dating back to the 19th century. The first one is the British Medical Journal, from 1840 till now, and then the, Lodic the London Medical uh, Officer of Health Reports. So the, uh, the task is actually to provide different perspectives from medical and public health on the tre treatment and prevention of diseases. And one of the aspects you have to do is to look at the diachronic uh, uh, part of this project. So the solutions for semantic search is to do a concept-based search, so automatically retrieve documents which contain a concept like tuberculosis, but also diachronically all the variants of this concept, and at the same time doing search based on relationships or events. For instance, find all treatments which are associated with tuberculosis. So what we call the first type is a time-sensitive text mining. So because we know that the same concept can be expressed diachronically in different ways, we want to be able to capture that. An example of this is tuberculosis and phthisis. The, so what we are doing is we're linking diachronically those synonyms, organizing in the thesaurus, and by using this actually uh, thesaurus, we're doing text mining, time-sensitive information retrieval. So this is actually how it works. We're using different text mining methods, and I don't have the time, of course, to explain those. They, we call them distributional semantics to find the synonyms, and different other unsupervised methods, which are domain and language independent. So the whole idea is basically to do that. This is how the search system looks like, or you will find it, you will see it in one month. So first of all, the first thing is we have the results. A traditional search, normally a user extracts pulmonary tuberculosis, but if, say for instance doesn't know the historical synonym, which is pulmonary thesis. So the second part is the system automatically suggests the related terms, in this case, thesis. The third step, the user expands the query. Then the distribution of pulmonary tuberculosis and thesis across time is seen here over the BMJ uh, um, actually uh, articles. And then you can have different uh, facets, filters. You can narrow down your search according to different types of metadata, which I'll come later on. So you can have conditions, you can have entities and events. To do that, we created a corpus which is going to be available very, very soon. Uh, I'm not going to get the details, 25 full papers annotated. We need to have this information to be able to uh, build the uh, name entity recognizers and the events. And they're again, uh, very diagronic, the articles. Very briefly, the description. You have different types here of entities, anatomical, uh, conditional, environmental, and so on for this type of historical corpus and some examples. And then you have the events. The two events, were follow we continue on this work. First is affect or causality, and you have different examples of those annotations. Uh, the fluid diffusion is limited by adhesions and so on. So as you can see here, you can actually, uh, by capturing the events and the by entities, you can uh, do a search based on events and entities. Sorry for the brief, I'm very brief right now because I don't have time. So the second project is uh, Mining by Diversity, and for this one, this is our website, and again, this is ongoing. Uh, we're mining the um, uh, BHL library, which is actually, uh, basically the whole point is to transform BHL, uh, add advanced search, and create it to a next generation social digital library. There are several people uh, on this, but I'll focus only on our work on text mining. The consortium is basically has about 130,000 volumes, and it's about uh, 63 gigabyte of text that we are mining. Uh, there are lots of OCRs and PDF, uh, PDF they're all open access. Currently, the search looks like that. So it's basically keyword search. Uh, and this is how, if you go to BHL's uh, site, you will find that. What we are doing is very much what we are trying to do, are doing for the um, history of medicine. Again, because the archives are quite uh, uh, across time, we support time-sensitive search. 
automatically generating uh, questions. So if a user asks a question, the system automatically suggests questions we know their answers. Answers, And we have also the faceted search based on different uh, types of metadata. Uh, there is a lot of OCR analysis there, which again, I don't have the time to go, but the point is you can see also the page in PDF and OCR corrected text with different annotations. Um, in order to do that, we use the different OCR correction methods. This is a work of our collaborators from Dalhousie. And uh, we basically, we take the documents from BHL, we correct the text, and then we just pass it through our workflow, uh, actually text mining platform Argo, which is um, a Yuma-based uh, platform. For semantic metadata, we have different entity types for biodiversity. Again, the same as before, but of different type, customized, species, location, habitat, morphology, and association types or event types like observation, habitation, and nutrition. These are the ones we identify, our users identified as relevant. So this is actually how it works uh, uh, um, with doing text mining. You have different annotations, so each sentences are uh, marked up automatically here using BRAT, the system we co-developed with the University of Tokyo, habitation and nutrition. So you see the types of semantic metadata <coughs> which support semantic search. To do that, we use our system, Infrastructure Argo, which is, um, integrates text mining uh, and uh, NLP processing system with different also annotation, um, uh, an annotation platform. It's based on UEMA. It also allows the interactive creation of workflows, and it's also cloud and high performance could be compatible. So for the biodiversity, I'll show you an example how we used our Go to uh, create the concept tagging. Uh, and this is uh, the system basically allows you to create workflows. From one side, you have a bunch of text mining analytic tools, explains what they are. So you have here, for instance, uh, linking with different ontologies uh, and thesauri, which are relevant for environment, uh, for the category of life, uh, PETO for phenotypes <coughs> and uh, gazetteers and so on. So basically, once you have the automatic, just go back before, automatically constructed workflow, then the documents are fetched, they're automatically annotated, and then what you do is you validate by having the annotation platform. And this actually, it, uh, you can, uh, the user can delete, can amend, can edit, and the results of that are used then to train again the system, the text mining systems. The last, I don't know how much time I have left, yes. two minutes. The last one is finding evidence, and this is using events, uh, basically one of the, the work we have doing for Europe Public Central, and I thought it's important to say that as well. This is the evidence finder, which runs on about two and a half million full text, mines about 82 million facts and 38 million sentences. We did full parsing on that based on ENGU, Tokyo's ENGU, and again, we created a parsing pipeline and so on. So how it use like, uh, where basically the search system is using a user query like Alzheimer's disease. Again, the same idea as before. The system suggests automatically the questions. And again, as, as I said, it's not autocomplete. We know that there are answers to those questions. So here you have automatically identify the answers, the sentences from the whole collection of text. And this is the last one. You can also extract interpretations. And by the interpretations, you have like negation or uh, positive or negative of novelty. So this, you see here, what increases skin cancer. You have no use and negation of protection for the skin. So that's my last slide, which is actually borrowed from my colleague John McNaught. Uh, what I try to say is there are different types of for text mining uh, tools and different types of uh, levels of sophistication in text mining. And you can start from terms to entities to relation events and what I saw, discourse analysis, to do different things. Um, so basically, we can perhaps use that for the afternoon. Uh, but uh, you can do different things depending on what basically the task. And the last is a, a slide of where, where we are and what we do. Thank you for your time. Thank you.